What is the best equation in physics? It's a daunting question, one that can't really be answered. In the same way that there isn't a best painting or song in history, there isn't just one equation that stands out as the greatest. I have noticed, though, that when talking about art, discussions usually tend to center around the influence of a piece, how the piece shifted things, brought about a new way of thinking, popularized a method, or just shook the status quo. With this approach, it is possible to at least single out the most important pieces of art, and so why not do this with physics? I think it's interesting to point out some parallels within the history of art and physics and show how rejection of the status quo and creativity have most often been the fuel to two seemingly separate fields. So let's try and do that. The beginning of physics can be traced back to the Greeks. The Babylonian and Egyptian civilizations before them started developing the field of mathematics, but the Greeks were the first to introduce rigorous proofs to support their theorems. It was also a Greek who first moved his studies towards a rational understanding of nature upheld by pure mathematics, thus creating the field of physics. Aristotle ushered in the era of Aristotelian physics, and together with other Greek philosophers and mathematicians, developed theories and theorems pertaining to geometry, fluid mechanics, and even the idea of atoms. This is where the first link between nature and math was made. Unfortunately, though, this link was short-lived. After the fall of Greece, most scientific advancements were based on a philosophical approach rather than a mathematical one. Discoveries and progress made throughout India and the Islamic world had little mathematics involved. And once the translated works arrived in medieval Europe, even the greatest scientific minds followed scholasticism. A program pushed by the church which aimed to reconcile Christian theology with classical and late antiquity philosophy especially that of Aristotle. Essentially, the Christian church had full control over scientific ideas, and this influence was also felt in the world of painting, where most artists were commissioned by the church to create religious artwork. By the 16th century, though, the Renaissance had affected both fields. Whereas the painters rediscovered the philosophical ideas of the Greeks and incorporated them into their still religiously inspired work, the scientific minds had grown tired of the scholastic program and wanted to re-implement the mathematical approach of the Greeks. The first to do this was Galileo Galilei, whose last published book explored the mathematics behind motion. Although these equations described only parts of motion, they succeeded in popularizing the use of math and physics and sparked a revolt against scholasticism, marking the start of the scientific revolution. This inspired others to follow suit, and soon mathematics had been re-established as a truly invaluable partner to physics. Now let's go back a second to the painters. They'd certainly underwent a revitalization, but it wasn't a revolution per se, as the move towards a more realistic aesthetic was embraced by their sponsors. And so, as this shift was embraced, it evolved into the Baroque and Rococo styles, which still implemented this realistic aesthetic. Until the first half of the 19th century, this was the standard by which paintings were judged. Exhibitions had set expectations and required a high degree of quality, even introducing a hierarchical system by which paintings were judged. This is why Edouard Manet's painting Le Déjeuner sur l'herbe was so shocking. It was a direct revolt against the established standards and consequently received a lot of criticism. It was also rejected by the selection committee of the 1863 Paris Salon. It was only after public outcry against the strict standards that Emperor Napoleon III allowed the piece to be shown at the aptly titled Salon des Refusés, or Exhibition of Rejects. Okay, but where's the connection here? Well, these rebellions against the status quo changed the way both fields were viewed by newcomers and allowed for new creative approaches to be taken. On the same year of Galileo's death, Isaac Newton would be born. As he grew up within a field of physics that encouraged a mathematical approach, he was able to push the field further. By 1687, his ideas on gravity required his invention of a completely new field of mathematics, calculus. These equations on motion and gravity changed our entire view of the physical world and could have never been achieved without Galileo's rebellion. Similarly, Manet's attack against artistic norms inspired a new wave of artists to ignore the detail-oriented styles and focus more on the feeling evoked from outdoor scenes. Those like Renoir, Cézanne, and Monet looked at him as their leader, 
which led Monet to paint this seminal painting, Impression, Sunrise. It caused such shock and disgust that it prompted critics to use its name as an insult, nicknaming Monet and others as the Impressionists. This sparked an explosion of creativity, and with the public interest, it led Expressionism to be the first artistic movement to be followed as it was happening. It threw away all notions of requirements or standardization and marked a turning point for the field. Painters were allowed to break away from tradition, and even from Impressionism itself, evident by the rapid evolution of styles and movements within the next few years. This was just one example of the similarities that can and have taken place between the worlds of science and art. The history of both fields shows a constant growth led by new creative ways of thinking, ways which disrupt and sometimes insult the established norms, but are nonetheless necessary for the progression of expression and discovery.